In other words, they never say, we're going to Iraq in order to exploit its oil, to exploit its labor, to dominate its people. Nobody will fight in a war like that, so they, they give it another name. The name is Save the United States from Terrorism, or Defend Democracy, or Defend Human Rights, some noble, noble cause. But it's not a noble cause. That's right. The war, the sanctions against Iran are designed to rob Iran and take away from the Iranian people the basic fundamental right to control their own destiny, That's right. to determine their own destiny, That's right. to own their own oil, That's right. to control their own airspace. Right to develop their economy for the sake of their people, people, to eliminate poverty, to be free from Western banks and corporations. Right. Are the Iranian people and is the Iranian government the enemy of the people of the United States? No. I would say, no. I would say no. no. Those who make war commit atrocities like the assassination of scientists, those who impose economic sanctions that are designed to deprive a people of that which is necessary to sustain life, right. those who commit those acts are the enemy, not just of the Iranian people, but the American people. That's right. So we're here today in front of the White House announcing the beginning of a new anti-war movement. Yes. A movement that will be on all continents. That's right. Letting the Iranian people know that they do not stand alone That's right. in the face of the aggression. They do not stand alone by themselves and have their banks and their corporations shut down by international sanctions. U.S. imperialism is a form of organized crime designed to take from Iran that which Iran must have right. the right to determine its own destiny. Freedom. That's why we're here today, and that's why people are uniting in 73 cities in the United States and around the world to say no, no war, no and war. no sanctions against Iran. That's right. Let Iran live. That's right. That's right. Let Iran live. Let, Let Iran live. Let Iran live! Let Iran live! Let Iran live! Let Iran live! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Sanctions have got to go! Hey, hey! hey. My name is Malachi Kilbride and I'm a peace activist. Um, I'm here today in front of the White House joining the uh, demonstration opposing any uh, uh, attempts to wage a war on Iran, attack Iran, which would be disastrous for the whole world. Are you having a feeling of deja vu? I mean, we had the Iraq thing, all the lies about that, and now more lies and propaganda, as Ray McGovern has pointed out, uh, Iran is not making nuclear weapons. Right. And he was an intelligence yeah, officer. I've been telling uh, friends uh, the last uh, couple of weeks that I feel like I'm back in 2002. Uh, the rhetoric coming out from the White House and the Pentagon and uh, the Israel lobby, uh, all uh, uh, throwing mud up at uh, Iran, saying that they have this nuclear weapons program and they're going to make nuclear weapons, which is all a, a lie, it's a fabrication. And I hope the American people are able to see through these lies uh, instead of uh, acting the way they did back in 2002, denying that an attack on Iraq was going to happen. This time, it really does look like it's for real. We know now that Cheney, back in 2005 and 6 really wanted to bring the United States in on an attack with Iran, and those plans have never died. They were just put on the back burner, and they're being dragged out again, and it's a very dangerous uh, position we're in right now. Thanks so much, Maliki. Lee Paz is working for a party, and I'm here today because I'm in the movement to fight the Tea Party, to fight the Klan, and
that say no to you, any any U.S. war against Iran. You know, and it's important that we cry out and take a stand against the robbing of the, the, the workers and the poor people in this country for a war against our first brothers and sisters in Iran. And your name? Uh, my name is Sharon Black. And Sharon, what group are you with? I'm with the uh, International Action Center, also the All People's Congress and Cultural Party in Baltimore. Is it fair to say, I know you're very conversant with the economic situation in the cities, in Baltimore and around in other areas, that the last thing we need right now is a war with Iran. Well, that's, that's why there's a whole delegation of people who come from Baltimore, a city where 50% of young people are without jobs. So we're angered. We thought that the U.S. would intervene in Iran or even use Israel, which the U.S. funds as a proxy to do their dirty work. It's outrageous. So we're here. Very good delegation last night. We had a really wonderful picket line in Baltimore City. We want to get the message out. No war on Iran. No sanctions. Sanctions are another form of war and imperialist intervention. So we have a number of demands, but you know, we're going to be on this issue of stopping the U.S. from waging war against Iran, and it affects us very much here at home. Now, uh, they've got the sanctions, they're going to put them in. They did it against Iraq with horrible consequences for innocent people, the children and all. So now they're, 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 they're setting the stage, and with the propaganda about the fact that they keep on saying that Iran is building nuclear weapons, and yet the intelligence shows just the opposite. And, and Ray McGovern has pointed that out, among others. Well, one of the things, Bill, that we've been saying to people is remember the weapons of mass destruction. Remember, this was the excuse that they used to go to war with Iraq. People should be very doubtful about what the U.S. Pentagon, U.S. imperialism, and the government here tells them to get them involved in another bloody war that's going to hurt people here at home, but certainly even hurt the Iraqi people. I went on a delegation of 100 people to Iraq as a, a, a nurse, really, to break the sanctions and deliver medical aid. And I, I tell you, the sanctions killed more people in Iraq than the actual bombing did. So the sanctions are a weapon, you might say a weapon of mass destruction. And they're also a weapon to use to intervene in countries, to make countries do the bidding of U.S. corporations of the 1%. So you got a number of problems. In no way, shape, or form does the 99% the working people, the poor people, the young people in this country have the benefit from intervening in Iran in any form, whether it's sanctions, whether it's pressuring their government, whatever it is, or out and out bombing. We're fearful that by spring there will be a war, even if it's waged by um, or started by Israel, which is a proxy for U.S. US Anything else, Sharon? No. Thanks so much. Thank you. Eugene. Today's rally is important because the politicians, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, are trying to make it out that the people of America want to wage war on Iran, that the people of America see Iran as an enemy, and that's not true. The American people don't want any more wars, no more interventions, and no sanctions. Are you having a feeling of deja vu that we did this thing with Iraq? They lied their way into that. They're lying their way into this one. Without a doubt. I mean, we remember in Iraq when Condoleezza Rice said, we don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. That's exactly what they say now. Oh, well, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, they're going to use it on the United States. They're going to use it on Israel. They're going to kill millions of people. It's the exact same rhetoric, really racist rhetoric, that assumes the regime in Iran is some sort of psychomaniac regime that just can't help but kill millions of people around the world. And we say that that is false. It is completely false. Iran is, does not have nuclear weapons. Israel is the one with nuclear Clear weapons, threaten them to using them on other people, not Iran. Anything else, Eugene? Well, I just want the people to know, and if they go to answercoalition.org, they can get in touch with us. We're building a movement across the country, around the world. No war on Iran. Stop the sanctions. Stop the sanctions. Stop the assassinations. No intervention at all. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And, uh, Andrew, what are you doing here today? Well, right now the United States uh, and Israel, the state of Israel, are uh, escalating tension and uh, 
with, with Iran and they are carrying out assassination plots against their scientists and uh, have threatened the new uh, sanctions, basically a blockade against Iran. And so uh, we're out here to say no to war in Iran, no to sanctions, no assassinations. And we've seen all this before, haven't we? I mean, oh, this, this script has been written before and it led to the war in Iraq. And, yeah. and the one study showed there were 935 lies and they got away with it. Yeah, I mean, I think Iraq is a very good example to learn from, especially, you know, as far as the sanctions go, because, you know, they uh, were sanctioned for many years. And I mean, it was found in, uh, by a UN investigation that, you know, over half a million children were murdered, over a million, ch million people were murdered just because of the sanctions. That was before they started bombing, you know, in 2003. So, I mean, we're seeing that, you know, this is a, a strategy, a, a, part, a tactic, rather, as part of a greater strategy to, uh, you know, bring Iran down to its knees, to cripple the country, to destabilize its government. And as Brian Becker just pointed out, there was a coup in Iran. They had a Democratic elected prime minister. And the CIA and the Brits perpetrated a coup and brought the Shah to power. So, I mean, and that was to get a hold of you know what? The oil. I mean, it's a perfect example um, of showing uh, U.S. hypocrisy, the United States government's hypocrisy. You know, they claim to support all these democratic movements overseas, but if you look who they've, you know, empowered in these countries, they've, uh, you know, like you said, you brought in, they brought in the Shah and, uh, you know, supported some of the most, uh, uh, Bloodiest regimes. Anything else, Andrew? Uh, yeah, just um, you know, get involved with the uh, anti-war protests against Iran. Um, if you want uh, more information, visit answercoalition.org. Okay, thanks so much. Why are you at the rally today? I'm here because the United States and through its proxy state Israel are again threatening another sovereign country in the Middle East. It's not in our interest. I'm going to stand up for the mothers, for the sisters, for the families in Iran that are going to be affected and that have been affected by these sanctions and war threats by the richest country in the world. And we've seen a lot of this before with Iraq. We had the sanctions under Bill Clinton against Iraq and then two wars. The country's been decimated, a country of 27 million. Uh, a lot of people have died, our troops have died, innocent Iraqis, innocent children, and there were refugees. There may be four million refugees from the Iraq war, many of them Christians. I mean, the people in this country just don't seem to understand what we're doing, and it looks like we're going to do it again. Yeah. I mean, it's not, that's the biggest lie that the people in the United States, the American public, is told that it's something that has to do with religion. I mean, the people in the Middle East, my family is from Iraq. Iraq was a multi-religious state. It was a secular state, actually. There were more women doctors in Iraq than there were in the United States. It doesn't have to do with religion at all. We need to stand with our brothers and sisters no matter what they call their God. And when bombs are raining down in the Middle of your town, your house is destroyed. It's not about what religion you are, it's about whether you're a human being and whether you're going to do something to defend yourself. Well, there were so many lies and deception that led us into Iraq, and it looks like they're doing it again. Ray McGovern pointed out, he was a CIA analyst, that all the intelligence reports show that Iran is not building nuclear weapons. That's what the, the intel shows, and yet they're screaming that, you know, they're a, a threat. Yeah, I mean, you're right in that, like, these are the same lies that, are le that led up to the Iraq war. What troubles me the most is that it's actually a continued strategy. The lying to the American public is part of it, but the U.S. government has always used the same excuse to intervene and overthrow governments, and that's for democracy or humanitarian reasons. Instead, what the U.S. is trying to do with the sanctions is it's trying to crumble the people of Iran, the hardest working, poorest people of Iran that actually supported the government because of the public benefits that they got. It's aiming its economic attacks on working families who have done nothing to attack the United States at all. 
and the United States hopes that over a continued effort of sanctions, it will cripple the government of Iran and either allow it to militarily invade or make the government so weak that it can just put in its own friendly... Anything else, Heather? I mean, I think that people should do whatever they can do to stand up for this. This is, I mean, what we're doing is we're standing in solidarity with, um, with our brothers and sisters around the world. I mean, it's our struggle here, but most, for, first and foremost, it's the struggle of the people in the Middle East that we're supporting. Thanks so much.